Welcome to the campus of Western Carolina for the Pink Zone game here between the Western Carolina Catamounts and the Citadel. I'm Kyle Rush along with Philip Jackson and Brian Hene and Philip. A week and a half or less till tournament time. Catamounts really looking for a big home win here tonight. Yeah, the home crowd to get going before the tournament. Now, Brian, this is a team, the Catamounts, where they have struggled this year. It's been in rebounding and in the turnover margin. It sure has, Kyle. And I think we need to get started early and get Tawaski King active early. And that's how uh, we'll get the rebounds and get an edge over Citadel. Now, this is a Citadel team that has struggles of their own to deal with. This is a team that's 4-21 and on the year, 1-13 and in the conference. But that being said, a win here on the road would give them momentum going into that conference tournament. Absolutely, records don't always mean anything. They've had a couple close losses, several close losses, two in overtime. Very scrappy team. Look for Mike Grissell, the center, 17 points, nine rebounds per game. Look for him to be a big part of this offense. They get him going. Very scrappy Citadel team. It could be a close game. Now, Brian, we talk about the turnover margin. But when you talk about the Catamounts, it almost goes without saying you have to mention Trey Sumler and Aruna Mutombo in the same sentence. Aruna Mutombo is the senior on this team, and he does a great job at doing basically anything that the team needs. He can get rebounds, he can score, he does everything. He can get a rebound and go coast to coast and score right when we need to. And when we need a big bucket, that's who you can go to is Aruna Mutombo. And Trey Sumler, he's an amazing point guard. He's one of the best in the SOCON. And I think he's going to have a big game tonight. And you look at the Catamounts, this is a young team. Philip, you and I have talked about it a lot. It's a team with a lot of sophomores, only three seniors and none in the junior class. How can the Catamounts use that use to benefit them heading towards tournament time? Well, it's almost, you can't really say they're sophomores anymore. The, the year is late, the tournament's coming up, so they're really not sophomores anymore, especially since they're going to have to step up big next year. Very young team, but they're a very experienced team. They've all had a good, they've all played big minutes and big roles so far this season. Now another one of those seniors that we talk about, Keaton Cole, he's come and started as of late. 81 three-pointers on the year. Bryant, how important is it to have a guy that can absolutely light it up from the perimeter? That's a big number at any level you play at. In the NBA, if you hit, you know, 81 threes, that's a big number. And same for in college. Keaton Cole's lighting it up. I mean, he's had games where he's hit six threes, and he's done that a couple times this year. So if we can get him going and he can start stroking early, it's going to be a huge advantage for the Catamounts. Now, Philip, I know that you, you mentioned it. Who gets your eye for the Citadel? You got to go with Mike Grissell. Like I said earlier, 17 points per game, nine rebounds per game. He's a force down low, very solid guy, big. As they are almost every week. To watch the Kings going to have to stay out of foul trouble and stay on the floor in order to defend this guy. Otherwise, he could, he could cause big problems for the Catamounts. Another young guy for the Catamounts that has played impressive minutes is Kenny Hall. Tall, linky, and he knows how to get it done on the defensive end. When you look at him on the floor, he doesn't look like a freshman, but in reality he is. But he plays big, he gets a lot of blocks, and hopefully he can step up in this game and maybe Grissel won't do as well. And now we'll bring in the fourth member of our team down to the sideline, Ryan Keyes, take it away. It appears we're having technical difficulties over there. With Ryan, we'll get back to him shortly, but we talk about it, the Catamounts. Bryant, when this team can get in transition, the leaders at the guard position, we talked Trey Summer, Haruna Matumbo, but Brandon Boggs is also an athlete in the fast court game, or in the fast break game. He's definitely uh, one of the players that can do multiple things. He can shoot threes, and like you said, he's athletic, so he can go and get the dunks and big rebounds when you need it. Now, Phillip, we mentioned how Keaton Cole's a guy to work on for the Citadel because he's so good from the outside. How does Citadel go about stopping a sharpshooter like Keaton Cole from getting hot early? Well, if I'm the, the Citadel, I'm going to put a bigger defender on him because you cannot allow him to just camp out in the corner and 
can get hot. Once he gets hot, he usually doesn't cool off. And that can spell big time trouble for the, the Citadel if they let him get hot, especially if he gets hot. So I'm putting a bigger defender on there. And I'm not letting him get a shot off. Well, thanks for joining us here at the Pink Zone game here at the Ramsey Center. The Citadel coming into town looking for their second conference win of the year. The Catamounts looking to get to 5-10 and ten and ahead of Chattanooga in the North Division and set up seedings for the conference tournament. And a big game, if nothing else, Bryant, for the confidence level of this team. Right now, with the conference tournament coming so close, every game is an important game just for the seeding of it. So it, it, this is a big game. Well, and with that, we will get set to send it down to our PA public address announcer for your starting lineups and the national anthem here on TV62's coverage of Catamount Basketball.
And with that, we once again welcome you to the Ramsey Center. We'll try Ryan Keys again over there on the sideline. Thank you, Kyle. And a really good matchup here tonight for the Catamounts should be what would hopefully be one of the easier wins for them of the season. The Citadel, four for 21 on the year. Kind of low competition for them compared to some of the other teams. So for the Catamounts, they're going to look for a quick start, get off to a rocket start, get the crowd into the game, and then finish later on. And Kyle, before I send it back to you, a message from Phil. He says, nice tie. Back to you, Kyle. Hi, thanks for that, Ryan. And you know, Ryan has a good point. I think the quicker the Catamounts start, especially if they can get this crowd into the game with a struggling Citadel team, I think that could go a long way here tonight. Well, what they definitely can't do is let there be a lid over the basket. They got to start shooting early, and hopefully they can make their first couple shots and get their confidence going. And we are underway here in the Ramsey Center. Catamounts corral the tip. Trey Sumler will look to start the offense for the Catamounts. King Cole, Matumbo, he'll have a look for three, buries it. Oh, a little nylon right out of the gate, Philip Jackson. Oh yeah, that's just textbook right there. Beautiful pick and roll, found the open man, knocks down three-pointer. You can't draw it up much better than that. And so right out of the gate, the Catamounts are up three-nothing. And Brian, what you alluded to, hot shooting really early. You can't start much faster than that, can you? <laughs> I mean, right when we said you need to start fast, Aruna Matumbo said, okay, I'll shoot a three and make it. So that's what he did. Now the Citadel looking for an answer. They almost turned the ball over. Looks for a three of their own. That one's long. Tawaski King, a big rebound on the inside. Philip, you said his play is big here tonight. Absolutely, you gotta get the big man involved early. Now you gotta reward him for good defense by feeding the ball, and that's just what they're doing right now. Tawaski King sets to go to work on the low block. A little jump hook, short. He usually makes those, though. I'll give that to him all day long. He'll start making them, and it's going to be very tough for Citadel. Off the screen, nice play, kick out. Good recover defense for the Catamounts, and that's something defensively, if there's been a struggle for the Catamounts, other than getting on the glass, it is also, Phillip, that screen game. We saw Georgia Southern use it really well here last weekend. Yeah, I don't know what it is. They just they don't defend that very well. Instead of going under the pick, they go, seem to go around it, and they get caught in a lot of bad situations that lead to a lot of easy baskets for opponents. Tawaski King, spin move in and out. Tip will go. Haruna Matumbo is there again, and Matumbo with five early points for the Catamounts. The Citadel now tries to work it around. Skip pass inside, working on a smaller Matumbo. Can't get it to go. The senior can play a little defense with the big fellas too, can he, Phillip? And as of right now, just good defensive pressure all around by the Catamounts. Good, good box out on the missed shots. And right now, the Catamounts are able to get out and run, which is just what they need to do. What you saw right there from Matumbo is good, aggressive uh, play down low. The guy that he's guarding, number 15, has a bit more height on him, but he didn't let him just go and do whatever he wanted. He got physical and blocked the shot. Jordan Robertson was the one trying for it. Keaton Cole from outside. Give him all three of those. It's an 8-2 early Catamount run. And Ryan asked for the hot start. And Brian, it looks like he got it here tonight. We sure did. And there's another turnover right there. So far, obviously, we're up 8-2. to two. And the, if you're the Catamounts, you got to like where this is going so far. An 8-2 early lead for Western Carolina. Over the Citadel, and Philip, this is a Citadel team that has come in with a lot of confidence over the Catamounts. They've won five straight. Yeah, absolutely. And if I'm if I'm the Citadel, I'm gonna go to my go-to guy down here on my next offensive possession. I'm gonna try to get Mike Gasell involved early and get him going. Brandon Boggs dribbles around the pick. Look inside. That'll be a kickball violation on Robertson, and the Catamounts will set it up again with 21 on the shot clock. If you're Coach Hunter, though, you couldn't have drawn it up any better. Than... A lot of movement from this offense early. They're working the ball around early and often. Nice pass inside. Somewhere he'll kick it out. Cole will try again. Look out. Two 
for his first two in if you're the Citadel, Phillip. This is exactly what you didn't want. Keaton Cole on fire from beyond the arc. Absolutely, and it might get ugly quick if he keeps shooting like that. Drive to the basket, pull up, jumper off the window, won't go. Loose ball on the floor and Robertson lost it out of bounds. But again, Citadel was there for an offensive rebound. But interesting, Phillip, they didn't go into Grossell like you thought they might. Yeah, and to be honest with you, I don't understand why. He should go to many Legion points and rebounds. He's obviously carried the team offensively this season up to this point, so it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. If I'm the coach the for Citadel, I want him touching the ball at least one time on every offensive possession. Citadel will take a timeout here, and Bryant, if you're the head coach in the huddle for the Citadel Bulldogs, what are you telling? How do you get your team to turn this early 11-2 run around? I think they got to play tougher defense. You can't let the best shooter on the Catamount team get wide open looks. He's two for two right now, and you've got to play tougher defense. You've got to get in their face and get physical like the Catamount defense is. And talking about that Catamount defense, they've come out with fire. Yeah, they gave up that one bucket earlier on the interior, but their defense is going into offense. They're shooting the ball well. But I think they're shooting the ball well, Phillip. It's shot selection on the offensive end for Western Carolina. Absolutely. They're, they're not forcing anything. They're very smart basketball. Very fundamentally sound. Your, your basics, pick and roll, kick it out. Keaton Cole knocking down open shots. I mean, it's just they're not doing anything special. It's just very basic. Sumler, Tawaski King from the charity stripe. You better believe it. Give him the Ramsey roll. It's a 13-2 early Catamount run. Sumler with a steal. Kick out, uh, and King was across half court, almost touched it too early before he got it to Brandon Boggs. Now Sumler got stripped from behind. A nice block by Robertson that time coming from behind to strip Sumler. Cole with a strip of his own and lost it out of bounds. And But already that was the most intensive series of action we've seen. Good defense both sides. First Robertson stripping it from Sumler and then Cole with the steal the other end before he lost out of bounds. Yeah, you're right. There was aggressive play on both sides there. I think Keaton Cole just got a little bit ahead of himself, had nowhere to go, and turned it over. But you got to like the defense from the Catamounts. They're playing aggressive, and right now the Citadel can't do anything about it. Marabi will check in for the Bulldogs as they will walk it back up across the floor. Lob inside, nice play right there. And Philip, you mentioned him. Grossell with an easy deuce on the inside. There he is right there, very simple. Get to the big man, let him do the work down low. Maruna Matumbo looks for a pick, waits on it from Tawaski King. King handoff Cole, he spots up for another one. That one's a little long, Matumbo the rebound. And he has had a fine game early on. Goes one-on-one -on -one with Grossell under the basket. Lost the handle, and Grossell, a big defensive stand for the Bulldogs. Citadel trying to run, won't go. Somewhere a tough rebound, and knocked out of bounds. It'll be Catamount basketball. That'll lead us to our first media timeout. Catamount's coming out on fire early. Keaton Cole, 2-2 two two from beyond the arc. Matumbo's hit one as well, leading to a 13-4 opening run for the Catamounts. Look to continue when they take on the Citadel. Citadel Bulldogs, 15-24 to go, first half. And we welcome you back to the Ramsey Center. Catabouts and the Citadel Bulldogs taking each other on. Ryan, we'll send it down to you. Ryan Keyes, your analysis of the first four and a half minutes or so. We're starting off with big games. Thank you, Kyle and Haruna Matumbo and Keaton Cole starting off with a big performance here in the first half, quickly getting the Catamounts off like we talked about in the pregame. 13-4 lead, and the Catamounts looking to roll, get the little snowball effect going on. Back to you, Kyle. <laughs> Thanks for that, Ryan. And a snowball effect is what it seemed like early for this Citadel Bulldog team until they got Grossell involved on the offense, getting them their second bucket. Matumbo, that won't go, loose ball. And Bray is able to dr drag down the rebound. Fast break opportunity tipped away by Tawaski King. They'll kick it out for three. Got it to go and a big shot for the Bulldogs. Catamounts come quickly the other way. Boggs looks for a step back, nothing there. 
into King and another turnover, Grossell, a big time play by the big man getting it done for the Bulldogs. Wright will pull it back out and Philip, you mentioned the play of Grossell. He comes, he starts getting more involved and the Bulldogs are on a 7-0 run. Absolutely, he's done it a little bit on the offensive side, a little bit on the defense side. He's altered a couple of shots defensively, grabbed a couple key rebounds. He is the team leader, and as of right now, he's playing like a team leader, and they're starting to chip away at this lead. Now, Brian, early on, Citadel now, they're trying to work Grossell the basketball. What do the Catamounts do defensively to try to counter? I think they got to just muscle him. Don't let him do his work down low early. Muscle him out of the paint and – force him to kind of stand around outside so he can't get the easy baskets inside. Kenny Hall on him now as Tawaski King goes and takes a break. Double comes, loose ball on the floor, and it'll stay here. And I think that's one of those defensive ways that you can go. When he's on the block, bring a double over to the weak side. Yeah, you gotta like the effort right there from Trey Sumler, even diving on the floor. He's not afraid to get his body involved and do whatever it takes to you know, turn it over. Hall, a nice block from behind. And Sumler comes away with it. And we talked about the defensive ability of Kenny Hall in the pregame. He shows us why right there with a the block from behind. Yeah, he's not known much for a scoring, but he does a little thing that your team needs. He's in right now. He's giving King a breather. Alters a couple shots, grabs a couple key rebounds. He's doing his job right now. Catamounts hadn't had a bucket in a while. Hollis, that one will go off the back iron no good. The last Catamount basket. Was it the 1639 mark? It has been over three minutes since the Catamounts have had a field goal. A nice spot up three from the top of the key. Miller, Miller that's his second from downtown. We got to get a basket right here. Yes, we still have the lead. It's 13 to 10, but I think we got to get a bucket to get the momentum back in our favor. A defensive board on the far side. Grossell again in on the paint. Pull up jump shot, in and out, won't go. Tough fight, Ish Hollis, a big board. And Phillip, we're seeing him play more and more as the season wears on. Cole, that won't go. Grossell, another rebound. As Citadel walks it across and Hollis had that defensive board on the last possession. Talk about the role he's taken on later in this season, Phillip. Well, he's, he's seen progressively more and more playing time because he, he does the small things. He scores when he has the open shot. He plays good defense when given the opportunity. He's really done a good job all season of making the most out of the playing time he's been given. Now he is with the basketball, looks for the pass. Corralled, but defensively, you got to like Keaton Cole boxing out Grossell on the other end. Boggs thought about a tough shot, and he'll kick it out. And Brian, another player that's seen increased amounts of playing time. Sinclair, who gets set to check in at the scores table. Our freshmen, as the years progressed, have gotten a lot more playing time, like you just said. But I really like what I saw from Keaton Cole on the other end, boxing out the biggest guy on the team and doing a great job at it. Wright will bring it across for the Bulldogs, who only trail by three after being down 13 to four in the early going. Boggs with a steal. Showtime with a two-handed dunk. Brandon Boggs, defense to offense, and well, when you hadn't scored in a while, that's an easy way to get a pair. That's also a good way to get the momentum going. That basket right there, it's a, it could be a possible four-point swing and a great job from uh, Boggs on that one. Loose ball on the floor and a foul. That'll lead us to our next media timeout. 11.08 to go, and we come back, we'll check in with Ryan Keyes. Catamounts lead at 15-10, 11.08 in the first half. When you come back, to TV62's coverage of Catamount basketball. Welcome back to the Pink Zone game here at the Ramsey Center between the Catamounts and Citadel Bulldogs. And while we have a chance, Ryan Keyes is down on the sideline for us. Catamount substitution. 
right, thank you, Kyle. And I'm here with Coach Middleton and Coach. It's been a up and down sort of season for your Catamounts, but they've fought hard throughout every single game. How do you feel about this year's team? Well, we're doing really well. We're on a, a four-game win streak, won five of the last six. We've got great momentum, and it's a great time to, to have that rhythm going right now. Now, TV62 has gotten the chance to cover some of your games. We're covering your game on Saturday against Chattanooga. Um, anything in particular that we think that you think you're going to see out of this team? Well, Chattanooga's a great team. They got good inside-out uh, presence with their players. You know, but our defense has been really big for us, and uh, hopefully tomorrow, uh, Saturday, will be, be another great outing for us. And we're just excited. It'll be our Think Pink game as well. So we're looking forward to a great crowd and a great day. Now we're getting pretty close to tournament time here near the end of the season. Do you think that your team's prepared for the SOCON tournament? We're ready to go. We're riding some great momentum right now. Have a lot of confidence. Uh, have worked really hard and uh, we're just excited about the coming weeks. All right. Thank you very much, Coach. Good luck in the upcoming games. Great. Thank you. Kyle, that was Coach Karen Middleton of the Lady Catamounts hoping for the rest of the season to go as well as the last couple of weeks. Kyle, back to you. Thanks a lot, Ryan, for that interview with women's head coach Karen Middleton. Hollis, who got the last bucket for the Catamounts, extending the lead to seven misses there. But she's right. Philip, this is a women or a lady Catamounts team that's won five of six, four in a row, and they're feeling really confident about themselves, and it'll be a big one here in the Ramsey Center, and we'll have it for you on TV 62 on Saturday afternoon. Absolutely. Any, anytime you can build momentum going into the conference tournament, you got to take advantage of it. Like you said, they've been playing well of late. Look for them to continue it up. And Hollis will check out of the ball game. And Preston Ross checks in for the first time at the 9.58 mark here in the first half. I really like what I saw from Ishmael Hollis on, the, on that series where he, when he came in. He was getting rebounds. He was being physical and doing what it took to you know, help the Catamounts out. And that's a lot of what we've been seeing from Ish for the past couple weeks now. He's been playing some really good ball. Sumler looks to run. Sinclair, talk about an athletic young player. Couldn't get it to go, but his athleticism is second to almost none. They'll work it around. Matumbo will try from long range. That won't go. Tawaski King, how about a rebound over Grossell and take him to the rack. That's just a grown man's move right there, grabbing the <laughs> offensive rebound, taking it right from the defender, putting it right back up. Uh, with comments like that, he's sounding like the real Philip Jackson that we know <laughs> of. I mean, I wish I could play like that and get a rebound, but when you get three chances at an offensive possession, eventually you're going to score. So getting rebounds is key. I mean, and, and we've talked about it with the Catamounts all year. When they've rebounded well, they've played well. And here's a game where they have eight rebounds, two offensive boards early, and they lead Citadel so far early going in the rebound count. Grossell at the line to shoot two. First is good as Preston Ross went over the back. And Keaton Cole checks back in for Trey Sumler. As Grossell sets for the second free throw. And for a big man, Phillip, he's shooting 70% from the line. When you have that kind of size, you know you're going to get contact down there. And when you can have that kind of free throw percentage, you're not a liability at the line. Absolutely. He's definitely a Swiss Army knife for this team right here. He does it all. Leading scorer, leading rebounder. And a great free throw shooter, which is rare in big men. A lot of times, they just that's not something they work on. They don't spend a lot of time on it. So it's rare that you have a big man with a good free throw shooting ability. Twoski King going to work on Grossell again. Rise, fire won't go. Ross had the rebound and had it stripped. A good play again by Robertson getting there on the defensive end. We've seen him in there defensively a couple times for the Citadel Bulldogs. Preston Ross might not be the biggest guy on the floor. He's only 6'4", but he got up there with the bigs and almost got that rebound. And now he creates a jump ball on, as Phillip said it, the Swiss Army knife for Citadel. <laughs> a big time play, and that's how you got to play it in the paint. Hand straight up, make it tough on him, and hey, maybe you can create a turnover or a missed shot. This time he gets the jump ball. Especially when you're undersized too, you have to stay on the minute. You got to box out and you got to, like you said, keep your hands straight up. And most importantly, you got sometimes you got to play a little bit more physical because you are undersized. And he did just that on that play. Catamounts looking to run again off the miss. Matumbo 
backs them down. Nice strip, and they're going to call a foul. And Ross may be wishing they didn't as he had a two-handed flush in his lap if they didn't blow the whistle. But it'll be a foul on Holston. And the first team foul, and Matumbo will go to the free throw line. Aruna Matumbo's been huge today. He's got two offensive rebounds already, which is the offensive rebounds are key. To You'll continue to keep scoring, and it'll help the offense a lot when you can get those offensive rebounds. Well, on offensive rebounds, it's like extra possessions. And when you the more possessions you can earn in a basketball game, obviously the more success you're going to have. We've seen teams that out-rebound Western Carolina and had success on the offensive glass. You look at games like Georgia Southern, and you look at games like Elon, two that stand out in particular, those teams went to work on the offensive glass, got extra chance buckets, and even though they may not shoot the ball very well, you get more shots to take. That helped you out greatly on the offensive end. Matumbo 2-2 two, two from the line. You're right. Field goal, field goal percentage doesn't really matter as much if you're getting offensive rebounds. Catamount stay in that man-to-man -man defense. Lost him on the other side. It's a block. As they say, Kenny Hall got there late or shuffled the feet. Tough call to make and one of the toughest in basketball. We'll talk more about it when you come back to TV62's coverage of Catamount basketball. Catamounts with a 21-12 lead with 7.53 to go here in the first half. Welcome back to TV 62's coverage of Catamount basketball. And before we get started again, Ryan Keyes is on the sideline. And again, Ryan Keyes having a little technical difficulties down there, but we'll get him. Next time we have a chance and miss a free throw. And as we talk about it, Philip, this is, we, we talked about it before we went to break. The block charge, one of the most common calls, one of the most bang bang calls, and one of the toughest for an official to make. Absolutely, there's a lot of factors that go in there. Is he set, is he moving? Is he too far up under the basket? Right there, I think the official made the right call. It appeared that Kenny Hall slid up underneath him after the offensive player had already left the floor. So I think that was a good call right there. And Philip, I know you do a lot of work officiating on the intramural side and we'll see you in action Tuesday night as we will have the intramural championships for you on TV 62 as well. So we look forward to having that in a good night of basketball here in the Ramsey Center. Wright commits the foul. It'll be his first personal second team foul. And Bryant, we've played almost 13 minutes of basketball, and there's only six fouls between both teams. A pretty clean game thus far. So far, yeah, you're right. It's been a clean game. And I also like the way the refs have been calling the game. They've been doing a great job so far, and I have nothing to complain about. Kenny Hall, a nice take to the basket. And when you have a tall, athletic guy like Kenny Hall, Larry Hunter who drooled over him, basically, in the recruitment process. And now that he's here in Cullowee and almost through his first season, that's an offensive foul. We talk about block charge. Well, there's your charge for you, Philip. But Kenny Hall, he has length and athletic ability, something that's so valuable at any level. Absolutely, and the way that he's really come on, I remember watching him in the first game of the season in Columbia when they took on the Gamecocks of South Carolina. He played very timid, very scared. Of course, that's part of being a freshman, but as the season has gone on, you and I both have seen him grow as a player. He's become more physical, and he's really doing exactly what you want if your coach Hunter does exactly what you want as a role player. Hollis Drive will kick it back out. Brandon Boggs, Citadel switch. It looked like they momentarily switched to a 2 3. Now they're back man to man defensively. 
Catamounts looking for offensive space. Boggs finds some with his own shot. It's a deuce. He had a foot inside the line, but a strong shot for Brandon Boggs. Well, he found space on that one. He created his own space, and it was a beautiful shot. But the difference on that, on that charge call between the charge and the block is he lowered his shoulder on that one, and that's what you can't do if you have the ball on the offensive side. Grossell, a big offensive board, puts it in and one. And a big bucket for Citadel. And they have a chance to get it back within single digits. That right there is just an example of the team leader leading the team right there. He stopped the bleeding on that play. Noticing his team is struggling, he comes with a big offensive rebound, a big basket, and now he's going to the line to try to tack on an extra point. I mean, and it had been over three minutes since Citadel had had their last basket all the way back at the nine about the 9.30 mark for the Citadel Bulldogs until Grossell was able to get that one off the miss. And again, Bryant, the importance of attacking the offensive glass. You're right. An offensive rebound was the reason that they scored three points on that possession. And today it seems like they're going to go on streaks. The Catamounts will go on a nice streak, and then it seems like the Citadel will reply with a streak of their own. So hopefully the Catamounts can cannot let the Citadel go on a good streak. Keaton Cole after hitting his first two from beyond the arc, short on that one as he came off the screen and the Bulldogs will get the basketball back. But what are, is the Citadel Phillip doing anything differently on Cole defensively than you saw in the opening few minutes? Well, they've got a little bit more pressure on him right there. He just missed that shot, but he's a great shooter. And if I'm Coach Turner, I'm gonna tell him to continue to shoot. But yeah, Citadel has Changed up a little bit. They've applied a little bit more pressure on him to not allow him to shoot. Now Cole on the break. Lags it back to Brandon Boggs, who went to the drive, and he was fouled on his way in. Bulldogs foul on number three. Marabi got in there and got a piece. It'll be the fourth team foul. And Matumbo checks back in for Ishmael Hollis as Larry Hunter looks on the far sideline. Boggs comes around the corner off of Matumbo pick. Got his man in the air. Jump shot won't go. Matumbo again fighting for an offensive board. And he has Grossell. Steps back on him. That won't go. Boggs an offensive rebound. Boggs has it swatted away. Cole swings it over to Sumler. And now they'll feed King. Drop step. Body flies to the floor out of bounds. And I believe we'll stay here. But again, Bryant, several chances off offensive rebounds for the Catamounts. King is doing a great job because he's getting his hand on, it seems like, every ball that comes off the rim. The one that Matumbo just got right there, King had a hand on that one. And he, so far, he's been a huge contributor to the offensive rebounding for the Catamounts. Boggs can't get it to go on what was the fourth Catamount shot of the possession. How about Bray from outside? That won't go. And Grossell went over to Waski King's back as King had position down low. A good box out there from Tawaski King. Sinclair checks in for Brandon Boggs with 4.42 here in the first half. Catamounts lead it by nine in the first half. Good crowd on hand. A lot of people supporting the uh, pink zone game. And as Karen Middleton mentioned, the women will have the same thing Saturday, all part of Western Carolina's breast cancer awareness here in the Ramsey Center through the Catamount basketball teams. Sinclair looking to drive baseline. Now he feeds King. King on gross sell, loose ball. Sinclair is able to get it. Pop out Matumbo, look to drive, nothing there. And the Catamounts being very patient. Four on the shot clock. Matumbo will pull the trigger. Bang, as he hits it over Bray. A patient offense is an efficient offense, Philip Jackson. And they got a good shot right there. They used up the majority of the shot clock and got a great look. Open look from Matumbo and knocks it down just before the shot clock expires. You could tell he was a senior on that shot. He knew exactly how much time was on the shot clock and got a good shot as well. The Citadel now. Trying to answer and get it back within single digits as they have 10 on the shot clock of their own. 
looking for Grossell inside. Tawaski King was playing good defense down there. A nice double. Keaton Cole swats it away with three on the shot clock. Official timeout. And the Catamounts and Bulldogs will have a timeout to think about it. When you come back, 3.33 here in the first half, three on the shot clock for the Citadel Bulldogs. When you come back to TV62's coverage of Catamount basketball here in the Ramsey Center. Thank you, Kyle, and I'm here with one of Hunter's Hooligans, and what's your name? My name is Jake Myers. All right, Jake, what year are you, and what major are you? I'm a freshman, and my major is communication, specifically broadcasting. All right, very fancy, just like me, actually. Now, Jake, we've got a pretty good game going on here. What do you think about the Catamounts? Uh, well, I think that they have a very strong team. They always have a lot of energy, very upbeat team, but they always need stuff to work on, and I like to watch them. I like to, like, sort of see what they can do, because they always surprise me once in a while, and they're a lot of fun to watch overall. You think they're ready for tournament time? Uh, I think they're ready, but they're obviously, they have to improve their defense a little bit, but they always seem to have enough oh, energy to bring it home oh, at the end. So I think if they keep the energy up, they'll be good to go. All right, now one more thing before I let you go. Just oh, no wrong oh, answers oh, here. How do you feel about Citadel's oh, pink shoes tonight? Well, I really I like the support for the I like the support for breast cancer. I really like that she was actually, but you know, being a military school and all you gotta do that, so I like it. All right, well, maybe we'll see you working for TV 62 one day, Jake. Thanks for the interview. Kyle, back to you. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Maybe a fellow 62 commentator in our midst there on the far sideline. Another one of the fine broadcast majors here at Western Carolina. As Haruna Matumbo is able to complete the three-point play the old-fashioned way. Bryant again more aggressive and one of those energy plays that Jake talked about in the interview with Ryan. One of the best games I've seen from him in a while. He's getting rebounds, he's being aggressive, just got a three point play and used all of his strength to get to make the basket and get the foul. I hope he plays like this the whole game because the Citadel is going to have a lot of trouble defending him. Haruna Matumbo just cashed in his 12th point so far today and that game at Furman, he didn't score a whole lot, but he just shows he gives you so much as a backcourt violation will be a turnover for the Citadel Bulldogs. That'll be their ninth. And we talked about turnovers being a factor. Phillip Catamounts only with four with three minutes or so to go here in the first half. They have done a great job of protecting the ball, but also on the defensive side, they just out hustled the Bulldogs. They've applied pressure. They've just they've been more intense. They've just been more physical also. They've just beaten them at every aspect of this game so far. A 30 to 16 lead for the Catamounts. Matumbo and Cole miscommunication there as they embrace each other going down the floor. And Matumbo thought Cole was going to the corner. Cole was flashing wing side. And it'll be the fifth Catamount turnover. And the Bulldogs, when they get those turnovers or when the Catamounts have mistakes like that, they got to take advantage. Harris for three, he does. A little nylon from way downtown, and that's the kind of spark the Bulldogs team needs, Bryant. Right now, I think if you're the Catamounts, you're up by 11 right now. Your goal is to make sure that you're still up at least double digits by the end of, or by halftime. You gotta keep the pedal to the metal and not let them get any confidence going into halftime. Trey Sumler into Tawaski King, and Tawaski King got a little too aggressive with an undersized man on him as Miller draws the charge. And Philip Ryan just talked about it. Citadel again will have a chance to get it inside that double digit mark. And he's exactly right. When you're when you're down by double digits, what you try to do before the half is get a run going and get it within single digits before halftime. So you can build on that going into the half and you potentially come out and make another run at the beginning of the second half. Turn it over though. Inside, it's a break for the Catamounts. Keaton Cole for three from the corner. Bang! He is lethal from there, especially when he gets an open look in transition. Miller will have one the other end. That won't go. Tip won't go. Rebound will stay with the Bulldogs. But we talked about how Keaton Cole had missed a couple in a row. How do you get him heated back up? You get him an open look in transition. Right there was. Perfect execution from the Catamounts. Aruna Mutombo gets the steal, goes coast to coast, and then finds the open Keaton Cole for the three. Sumler with a rebound. Catamounts will push yet again. Sumler pulls it back. Mutombo will take the jumper from the top of the key in and out. 
Grissel with the rebound. And a special halftime coming for you. Folks at home will have Purple Thunder will be performing at halftime. And after that, Sierra Lewis will lead our halftime show. Here in the Ramsey Center, Phil Jackson will be there along with Ryan Keyes to break down the first half and get you set for the second half of basketball here in the Ramsey Center against the Citadel Bulldogs. All that coming up at halftime. And an offensive foul on Aruna Matumbo. And it'll be his first foul, and both teams and their next foul will be in the bonus. Hollis will check in, King and Matumbo will check out. As Ross, the other catamount, to check in in the last minute of the half for the Western Carolina catamounts. And a trip call, I believe this one will be on Keaton Cole. And that foul is going to send the Citadel Bulldogs to the line. Ashton Moore will take the free throws. And a 76, well, it'll be Harris at the line, a 67% free throw shooter for the Bulldogs. Harris connects on the first end of the one and one. Earns the second one. And Brian, I know we've talked about the importance of free throw shooting a lot, especially in a one-on-one -on -one situation. You miss the front end, it's almost like a turnover. It basically is, and Harris did a good job right there to make both of them. And even making free throws, just doing anything can give them a spark going into half. Long rebound comes Boggs. And about a five second, about an eight second differential between shot and game clock. Shot clock at 25, game clock winding under 33 seconds to go. Catamounts with a 10 point lead. Plenty of time, they got 15 on the shot clock with the Catamounts as Trey Sumler comes and takes it. Gets the call from Coach Hunter who calls signals. Under 10 to go on the shot clock. Trey Sumler and company will go to work. Sumler will try the drive. Cole's gonna get an open look. Bang again. Keaton Cole from outside. Inside of 10 seconds to go. It'll be a half court he off the mark. And that's how the half will end. Keaton Cole with four three pointers in the first half. And with that, the Catamounts and the Bulldogs will go into the locker room. When you come back, it'll be Purple Thunder taking the stage here at the Ramsey Center. And after that, Sierra Lewis, along with Philip Jackson and Ryan Keyes will have your halftime show, courtesy of TV62 on CatamountSports.com. Hey everybody, I'm Sierra Lewis here with TV62's Halftime Report and I'm here with Bill Jackson and Ryan Keyes. Okay guys, so um, what have you seen that the Catamounts are doing really well here in the first half? Well, first of all, offensively, they're doing, they're doing a good job of getting Keaton Cole involved. He's got 12 points. He's hit four three-pointers, and that's exactly what you want out of him. So, And defensively, they intensity-wise, they've just been outplaying the Citadel off. Okay, okay uh, what can uh, the Citadel do, you know, to back down? You know, what can we get the Catamounts to do to score some more points? Well, for the Citadel, the first thing they need to do is focus in on the three-point shooter. Right now, the Catamounts, five for 14 from the line, around 35%, pretty good percentage. But to take 14 shots from the three-point line, I mean, that just means that the defense is giving them open looks. And Keaton Cole, he's going to take advantage of it when you give it to him. Already has hit four three-pointers tonight. So if you're Citadel, you've got to get on top of that three-point shooter and force them to go down low with the ball. All right. What does uh, Western need to do here in the, coming up in the second half to really get back up here and start scoring some more points? Well, as of right now, if I'm Coach Hunter, I'm not changing anything. Offensively, you're playing well. Defensively, you're playing well. Um, but what they need to do is try to go ahead and put this game away early on. Come out within the first four minutes, win that first four minutes, really just kind of drop the bomb on them and get this game over with early. Absolutely. Okay. Um, if you are Citadel's coach, what are you going to do when you come out here in the second half? Well, if I'm Citadel's coach, I mean, A, focus on the three-pointer again, but down by 13, you're against the team that honestly is probably a little better than you are, and they showed it in the first half. 
you're on the road in front of a hostile crowd. This is one of the best crowds in the SOCON Conference. I'm saying just go out and play. Don't look at the scoreboard. Just keep on playing hard. And if something happens, it happens. If not, hey, at least you left it all out on the court. Good deal. And uh, with the defense and the Catamounts, how do you think they're doing with defense? Well, defensively, this is the best game I've seen them play all year. They're forcing turnovers, capitalizing on that turnovers by getting easy baskets at the other end. They're out rebounding the Citadel, which I don't think I've seen that all season. So right now, defensively, they're playing as close to perfect as you can play. Okay, great. Well, that's it for the halftime report here from CD62. This is Ryan Keyes and Phil Jackson. I'm Sierra Lewis. Thank you. Sideline with Coach Wilson. All right, thank you, Kyle and Coach Wilson. We've seen a pretty solid performance by the Catamounts here in the first half. How do you keep that going going into the second? Uh, just got to maintain our energy and our effort level. Uh, guys are playing pretty hard and executing on both ends, so just got to keep our concentration level high, our energy level high, and just make sure we give them maximum effort right there. All right, now from three-point line, team has been on fire. Keaton Cole alone, four from nine from beyond the arc. Were you expecting that, and how do you keep that going? Keaton has been shooting the ball well for us uh, all year, so uh, that's something that he's kind of, you know, kind of, kind of stepped into. He's been a knockdown shooter. Uh, he and uh, Haruna Matumbo, both our senior guys, have really stepped up and played very solid first half. So, so we can keep those guys in at the second half as well. Now, how do you avoid looking ahead in this situation? Up by 13 against a team that you should probably beat. You've got a couple big games left on the schedule. How do you keep the guys focused on this one first? We've, we've adopted a motto, it's one possession, um, one, one media timeout, one game at a time, and that has behind us, so we've got our guys, you know, refocus on a half, it's 0-0 zero, zero ahead of us, and just try to go out and really have a good second half as well. All right, thank you very much, Coach. Good luck in the second half. Kyle, that was Coach Wilson from the Catamounts. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Ryan. That was Coach Wilson, as Ryan alluded to, as we get set for the second half. That was your TV62 halftime show. And we thank you for being with us and thank Purple Thunder for doing what they do uh, time and time again here in the Ramsey Center. When you come back, we'll talk about the second half between the Citadel Bulldogs and the Western Carolina Catamounts. Catamounts lead 36-23 at the half here in the Ramsey Center. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center. Catamounts set for action, and they look to keep up that energy level as Coach Wilson alluded to. Got to keep up the energy. Got to keep the foot on the accelerator up 13 as we get ready to start the second half. Absolutely. You can't suffer a letdown defensively. To this point, probably the best defense that you and I have seen them play this far, uh, holding an opponent only 23 points. That's just outstanding. So you got to keep the defensive pressure up, which will lead to more turnovers, which will lead to more easy baskets. Now, Bryant, the Catamount's biggest flaw for you in half number one was what? The biggest flaw, I think, was capitalizing on the shot opportunities that we had. We made a lot of baskets. We did. But there were some times where it was like, I don't understand how he didn't make that shot. I mean, really, I, for the most part, we did. We had a, pre a really good, solid half. And there's not much that we can improve on. If we can stay steadily consistent, then I think we'll be all right. And you got two Catamounts in double figures. Matumbo and Cole both with 12. Tawaski King puts that one in. That'll be his sixth point of the game. And extend the lead to 15. 
Lob inside, nice pass. What a dime that was. And Robertson able to finish at the rim. The beautiful thing that we did in the first half was get, not get in foul trouble. Twasty King, one foul. Aruna Mutombo, one foul. And it gives us room to be able to still be aggressive and not worry about him fouling out. Boggs in trouble now as he's picked up his dribbler. Matumbo, step back jumper, you better believe it. And how solid has he been tonight? Catch that in for two more and 14 on the night. He's been very smooth offensively, just very in sync with how things are going. Smooth day shooting the ball, he's just being a senior. And he lost it out of bounds. Big Grossell and the Catamounts will get the ball on another turnover by the Citadel Bulldogs, their 11th. First and a half. And if you're Citadel, that, that's been one of your big bugaboos is turning the basketball over and giving this Catamount team a chance to get out and transition. The reason they're turning the ball over so much is because of the pressure defense by the Catamounts. They're doing a great job at getting in their face and getting them, I guess, a little bit nervous with the basketball. I feel like they have to rush it. Matumbo doing all kinds of moves. Can't get it to go, but he is fouled. And he'll shoot a pair and, well, Philip, it looks like Haruna Matumbo has just made up his mind. Well, I'm just going to put on a clinic here as a very impressive individual drive to the rim that time drawing contact. It might, like it might be the pink socks, Kyle. It might be the pink socks. All part of the pink zone game. Matumbo, I don't know, maybe he should try the pink socks more often. He's having a heck of a night here for the Catamounts. That one will roll all around the rim and bounce out. Returning the Bulldogs, number 24, Lawrence Miller. Lawrence Miller will return for the Bulldogs. His two baskets came from beyond the arc, so he has proven to be the Citadel's guy from the perimeter, and the Catamounts will have to keep tabs on him. As if you're Citadel, I think, a guy shooting two and two from beyond the arc, you have to try to get him involved using Grossell on the interior first. Yeah, I think your offense at this point needs to run for those two guys. He's been the proven shooter so far, and Grossell has all season long has been the proven scorer, so I think their offense needs to run for those two guys. That jumper is good from downtown. And right when we talk about him, Miller hits one from beyond the arc, and Brian, that was not an easy look. No, it wasn't. He had a lot of pressure in his face, but he knocked it down anyway. And then we see Aruna Mutombo again. He's so difficult to guard because he knocked down that shot when he faked the to drive by him. And then when the guy got right up in his face, he drove right by him. So I don't know what you're going to have to do if you're the Citadel. You might have to double team him. Sumler lobs it into Matumbo. Skip past the outside for Cole. Back into Matumbo. Work his post game. Fadeaway jumper off the window. Bank it home. Haruna Matumbo having a phenomenal night here at the Ramsey Center. Pretty, pretty move right there by Haruna Matumbo. Grossell answers with a bucket of his own, and the Catamounts take it right out of the basket and look to run. Matumbo, now he'll drive, kick out to Cole, swing it around for Summer, who's open for three. That won't go. Citadel looking to push. Miller, kick out for three. That won't go. Grossell, an offensive board, up and under, and he's fouled. And Grossell, a couple big plays for the Citadel Bulldogs, getting big on the inside. He just got a big offensive the rebound on that one, and Twosky King tried to get the block, got him with the body. I think it's a good foul. Don't let him get an easy layup. We'll see what he can do from the line. Grossell will step to the free throw line into the cat house band in the background. First is good. Number 25, James Sinclair. Lead cut to 12. As Grossell sets for free throw number two. In and out, won't go. King the rebound, Sumler will bring it up for the Catamounts and a 12 point lead. Sumler, how about he heats up? With Matumbo out, he steps up offensively, buries a tough jump shot 
And that's something that Sumler has the ability to do. And hard to believe his first bucket of the ball game, but he has the ability to create his own offense. Yeah, and like you say, he's got this, he has the ability, but tonight he hasn't needed to. Chawaski King's played well. Keaton Cole's been as good as you want him to be on the outside, and Matumbo has been about as perfect as you can be. So Sumler hasn't had to really work hard at tonight's game. But he has done well in other areas. This is Sumler with three rebounds, three assists in that first half. Tawaski King goes back up. That won't go. Fight for the ball, and it'll go to the Citadel Bulldogs as Tawaski King got a good offensive board, just couldn't finish. And again, you see Tawaski King down low, fighting with the big boys, getting the offensive rebound, being tough. He didn't make it on that one, but most of the time he's going to make it after an offensive rebound. you got to like what we see tonight from Tawaski King. Miller again, a rainbow jump shot. That won't go. Tawaski King, another rebound. That's his fifth, or sixth rather, as he had one on the other end. The crowd, the crowd was saying air ball on that one, but I'm pretty sure Sinclair got a hand on that one. Good block by the athletic shooting guard in Sinclair. And a foul on the other end. And I believe that one's on Tawaski King, his third. So you mentioned it, and he's already picked up two here in this half. And you mentioned how the Catamounts, how key it is for him not to be in deep foul trouble early. He has three now with about 16 minutes here in the half, second half. I must have jinxed him or something, I don't know. But right now with three fouls, we see Kenny Hall about to come in and sub out for him. Well, but before Hall subbed out for him, a heck of a block on the other end. King denied him. Summer will be at the line when you come back. Catamount's looking to add to a 14-point Catamount lead, 45-31 at the 15-45 mark when you come back to Catamount basketball on TV 62. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center. We'll send it down to the sideline again. Brian, take it away. All right, thank you, Kyle. And I'm here with Terry from the Purple Thunder halftime show. And Terry, how long did it take to work on that Purple Thunder show before it was ready? Uh, we haven't really worked on it too much. We get together and practice uh, just once a week. Now, you've been uh, with the drum line for a while now. How's it been? being a drummer at with the best bands in the land. Well, I've been a drummer here for three years now, and I got to tell you, man, it's probably the best experience that I've ever had. Like, I love performing for the people, getting the crowd into the game and everything. You know, it's just a good passion of mine. Love to do it. Now, Terry, for some of our viewers that haven't come out to a basketball game or a football game, watch you guys play, what do you have to say to them to get them out here? You guys don't know what you are missing. You have to come out, man. Like. You're probably going to think it's the best performance you've ever seen. So get out here, support the Catamounts, you know, go team. All right, thank you very much, Terry, for that interview, putting on a show every single basketball game. Kyle, back to you. Thanks a lot, Ryan. Kenny Hall, we think, got the tip in as the buzzer went off for a substitution. And Sumler will check out after missing from the free throw line. And they still haven't decided whether or not they'll award Kenny Hall with a bucket. They do give Kenny Hall the basket on the inside. So give Kenny Hall the deuce. A nice offensive rebound off the missed free throw. And really something that is rare for Trey Sumler missing at the charity strike. Absolutely. He shoots 84% from the free throw line. He struggled as of late, though, but he's still a solid free throw shooter. Kenny Hall blocks Grossell. How about that for a freshman? Gets a put back on one end. And Keaton Cole, oh, he thought about pulling the trigger again. Matumbo, step back. Why not? When you got it, Bryant, sometimes you just have it. And Haruna Matumbo cannot miss tonight. I don't even know what it is. He must be <laughs> just feeling it. I don't know. It's, it's, what we've seen from him is, has been great. And I'm not going to complain about it. So keep doing what you're doing, Haruna. And for Haruna Matumbo, how about this? We still have just under 15 minutes to play. He has 19 in this ball game for the Catamounts. Helping the Catamounts extend the lead, 49-33. Trey Sumler set to check back in. 
And Haruna Matumbo again with the ball in his hands. And if you're the Citadel, you got to find a way, Phillip, to get it out of his hands as often as you can. Because when a shooter is shooting the way he is, Haruna Matumbo, 6 of 10 from the floor, 1 of 2 from beyond the arc. When he's shooting that well, you have to find a way to make someone else beat you. To be honest, Kyle, I think they need about eight people on the floor to stop him tonight because Keaton Cole is also hitting. And so if you pay too much attention to Matumbo, Keaton Cole will kill you also. So, honestly, I don't know what to tell you what the Citadel should do. Somewhere on the break, fouled. And thought for a moment it might be intentional foul, but Sumler will go to the line to shoot two to extend the lead. So, Sumler comes back into the game, and he extends the defense defense to offense, and few people can beat him to the other end when he gets a head start. He's got a lot of speed, and once you saw him at half court getting that ball, you knew he was going to get to the basket, and they'd have to foul him, or he's going to get an easy layup. Sumler hits on the first. Number three, Cosmo Morabi, subject for the Bulldogs. As he amends for the prior miss from the charity stripe. Sumler second is good. Two and two this time for the sophomore point guard with a lot of promise. A heck of a player, reigning freshman conference player of the year. And this year we've really seen him do it all. Offense, defense, rebounds, and score. Along with facilitate the basketball, a very dangerous player as that layup was contested by Matumbo and Hall over the backboard. Ball to the Catamounts, but somewhere really has the potential to be something special in the next few years here at Western Carolina. Absolutely, and the great, the great news is he's only a sophomore. He's got two more years to keep improving and to bring great things to this program. I'll tell you another impressive player is Sinclair who had the basketball right there. Matumbo, he's not bad either. Sinclair missed the tip. Almost got it on cue. Passed down and almost cleaned out our cameraman. Matson over there, standing in, taking a shot for the team. Good work by our crew as always. And I don't know, I don't know necessarily the camera end of it, but gotta think it takes some guts to stay in there and take a shot like that. Well, he had to save the camera. You can't let the camera get hurt. <laughs> uh, kudos to our crew. And Matson on. Under the basket there, getting some great looks for us. And proven he can take a lick down there as well. Yeah, it didn't seem to face him much. Some little walk it into the front court. Ross now with the basketball. And it's a turnover. Nicely done, Marambi. A nice little scoopy do as he lays it in off the window. A nice look there from Marambi taking it away from Boggs. The Ross Boggs exchange and taking it the other way for two Citadel points. It was an impressive move offensively. Boggs was probably going to swat that shot into the fifth row, but he did a good, uh, Marambi did a good job of using the basket as cover. Got a reverse layup. Somewhere tried to save it. It starts a break. Grossell, a nice pump fake, and the use of the head fake to perfection there by Grossell, getting rid of two Catamount defenders that were going to swat that one against the backboard. Lead is now down to 14 after two quick fast break bus buckets for the Bulldogs. Boggs step back on Marambi. Avenges the earlier fast break as he gets the roll. And a timeout will be taken. Keaton Cole, Tawaski King check back in. And we'll take a break with him. 53-37, 12 12 to go. Here in the ballgame, Catamount's lead here at the Ramsey Center.
Welcome back to the Ramsey Center. Catamounts lead at 53-37. Keaton Cole has checked back in, and this is a Citadel team that, while Haruna Matumbo may have gone off on him, Keaton Cole has yet to score here in the second half. But as we know, he can score in bunches for the Catamounts, and you can't forget about him because if you fall asleep on him, he'll tear you up. Yeah, and as, and as of late, the Citadel has been playing good defense on Cole. They haven't allowed him to get loose. But the moment they forget about him, you know he's going to hurt him. And pleased to announce the next dead ball, Ryan Keyes will be over there with new athletic director Randy Eaton. So we'll see what he has to say. Next media timeout before we head into break here in Western Carolina. Wright will take the jump shot. That'll go from beyond the arc. A big shot from Delonte Wright. Gets set it out within 13. Boggs, the answer, spins out. Grossell, the rebound, inching closer and closer to a double-double for him. That's his eighth board. He already has 10 points on the night. Right, will swing it down, looking for Grossell inside, nothing there. And we'll have a push foul, which will lead us to that timeout. And we'll take a moment now to send it over to Ryan Keyes. Win. It's the 13th foul. Official and official timeout, 11.26 when we come back. Catamounts will lead at 53.40 here on TV62. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center. Catamounts lead by 13. And now we will send it over Ryan Keyes with new athletic director, Randy Eaton. Thank you, Kyle. I'm here with the new athletic director of Western Carolina, Randy Eaton. And first off, congratulations on the position, sir. What have you been able to do so far as athletic director? I think so far what we've really focused on doing is getting out in the local community, trying to build some support from the community, get them to come to the games, you know, buy tickets, support our student athletes but also just reestablish some relationships that have been missing for, quite frankly, the last decade. And it's been pretty obvious that that's been a focus of you, um, Chancellor Belcher, a couple other people. Now, you were the one that hired Mark Spear as the new football coach. I've heard a lot of good things about him. What do you think about Mark Spear? Well, they didn't think Mark was the right guy. I wouldn't have hired him. But um, Mark's a fit in the community. Everybody's excited. Mark and uh, his wife, Paige, are coming home. Mark coached here for about six years back in the 90s. So uh, it is a, com a homecoming of sorts for Mark. And just the entire community is just galvanized behind Mark being our next head coach. And you can see that in people's eyes when we go out and talk to him. Just the level of excitement that's returned to their faces. Now one last question and then I'll let you get back to the game. But since we're here at a basketball game, any changes for the men's or women's basketball team that you can see or do you like it the way it is right now? I, I mean, when I look at it, you know, I look around and what's missing are students. The environment here, we need more student support here. We're going to begin that sometime in March. We're going to start a series of lunches over in the dining hall, invite students to come, have lunch with us, just talk, chat, take a bunch of our coaches over there. It won't be focused on just basketball, but it will be focused on regalvanizing our student support and getting them here to the games. I would love for this place next year to be filled, this entire bottom section, with students. All right, thank you very much, sir. Good luck with all that you have planned. You're doing a great job so far. Thank you. Kyle, Randy Eaton, the Sorry. athletic director for Western Carolina, back to you. Thanks a lot, Ryan, for that interview with new athletic director Randy Eaton and a little bit of everything in that interview. And one thing that he stressed in that last point, challenging the catamounts. Hey, wh why don't we go ahead and try to do it against Appalachian State when they come a couple, not this Saturday, but next. Let's fill up this bottom bowl, as Randy Eaton said he'd love to see next year, as Appalachian State will be here not a week from this Saturday, so about 10 days away. And Randy Eaton challenging students to get out of the ball game. So we'll do the same here at TV62. And what a sight that would be. I, I still remember Brian, I know you were on that call with me. Last year's Appalachian State game. If that game didn't send chill bumps up your spine, I don't know what did. That was definitely one of the best games that I've ever seen. And being able to call it was 
amazing. It was only my third <laughs> broadcast, so I was probably really nervous, but great game. And when Mike hit that shot, the entire crowd went crazy. I had to do everything I could not to go crazy. <laughs> and uh, great game. And it's it's Western versus App. It's always going to be a good game no matter what. Yeah, we handled your rookie mistakes. It's all right. <laughs> He's learned on the job. The Catamounts, meanwhile, have let the Citadel climb back within 11. Matumbo misses the lay-in. Tawaska King, another rebound, another stuff. Another two points for Tawaski King, who now has 10 rebounds and eight points on the night. Grossell, another strong take. And really, for the Citadel Bulldogs, he is trying to bring back this team in the game single-handedly. Yeah, he's getting some help from outside shooters, but he's going to need more of that the last nine minutes if Citadel's going to be able to try to climb and tie this ball game back up. Right when we said something good about Twosky King, and, I mean, he has a, had a great game, eight points, ten rebounds, but he just picked up his fourth foul. That's going to send him to the bench. Kenny Hall's on the sidelines about to, you know, get him out of the game. But So I'm not sure how much we'll, more we'll be seeing from Twosky King, but he's had a good game regardless. And... Kenny Hall, I think, will be able to fill in. He does. Kenny Hall does different things, but I think Kenny Hall will be able to fill in his in his shoes. Kenny Hall, four points and a couple rebounds and a couple blocks on Grossell as well. So he's had a pretty fine ball game in his own right. In Twaski King's place when he has had to sit, like he does now on the floor, is Sumler, Boggs. Matumbo and Kenny Hall. Citadel goes to a 2-3. Seems to have taken the Catamounts a little off guard here in the second half. Absolutely, but the thing about a 2-3 zone is it leaves the corners and the wings open. And with a shooter like Keaton Cole, he could very easily tear up the zone kind of quick. And if you're Citadel, you climb back in this game, you're only down by 12, which is definitely a a margin that you can come back. So you got to be careful and not let Keaton Cole sneak away and get free. Oh, and another thing that you can do on the zone, in the zone you have to be sure you box out. They don't there. Matumbo gets the put back and gets his 20th point. Somewhere coast to coast. How about the body control? Can't get it to go, though. Boggs fighting for it on the interior. Grossell takes it away. Now it's a break for Citadel. Miller, a nice take on Keaton Cole. And Brian, I know that you are a fan and watch Syracuse basketball, and your key to penetrating a stout 2-3 zone like Syracuse runs. Well, with the 2-3 zone, it opens up the three-point shot, and right there at about the free throw line, that's where you got to get the ball because they crash in, and then you can pass it out and hopefully get some threes. And with the three-point shooting that the Catamounts have, I don't even know if two, a 2-3 two, is the best thing to be in because we can shoot lights out when we're starting, when we're hitting well. Summer working on the clock a little bit. Sumler will try from around that free throw line. Thought he got hit. And it'll stay with the Catamounts. Nine on the shot clock. Official timeout. We'll take one with them. 7.32 to go. Catamounts lead by 12 over the Citadel Bulldogs here at the Ramsey Center on TV62's coverage of Catamount basketball. Welcome back to the Ramsey Center as the Catamounts get set for more play. They have a 12-point lead, and now we'll send it over to Ryan Keyes, who's in the cheer squad. Now, Ryan, take it away. Johnny and Brittany of the Western Carolina cheerleading squad. And, Johnny, how long have you been with the squad? Three years. Now, how's that gone for you being one of the few but very good members, male members of this cheerleading squad? It's been very, very good experience. Um, you know, I've been trying to do uh, whatever I could this past year, really trying to bring in some new guys. Uh, like you said, there is very few of us, so we've been trying to recruit some people. Um, I'm probably going to be leaving after next year, so I was really hoping to get some more guys involved while I'm here. But uh, overall, it's been a great experience. We went to camp, and uh, now we're going to nationals this year, so we're super pumped, and uh, it's just been an awesome experience. And Brittany, as a senior leader of this cheerleading squad, how do you feel about this squad and what you guys have been able to do this year? I think we 
we've got a very good, good and talented group of girls and boys this year. I think we're going to do a lot of good stuff in nationals, and I'm very proud of my team. All right, good luck to both of you going forward. And Kyle, these girls and a couple of guys, they just keep on cheering for this Catamount squad no matter what's going on. Back to you. Thanks a lot, Ryan. As Ryan, as usual, all over the place getting us good stuff here for you at home on TV62. Timeout called. Matumbo again forcing the action. Now on the defensive end, he's not just scoring the basketball for this Catamount team. As the Catamounts take the floor, Haruna Matumbo creating an offense and defense as we see a turnover caused by Haruna Matumbo in the backcourt. He's doing it all for this Catamounts team. He is doing it all, but he, he's not doing it alone. This defense now has forced 15 turnovers. Now, although they've all played well, Matumbo's definitely led that charge. He's just played exceptional at, in every aspect of today's game. Keaton Cole now. He swings it over. Now he'll try again from beyond the arc, won't go. A good rebound inside by Wright. Although that one didn't go, I'll take that shot all day. He's open, he, was, he squared up, good shot, looked good, but. And I suppose when you've made 85 of them in a year, you can take an open look when you get it. Yeah, I think Coach Hunter would be all right with that. <laughs> a really impressive number for Keaton Cole, foul is on Brandon Boggs. Citadel will go to the line to shoot two, and, or shoot one rather, and a chance for the Bulldogs to inch closer to that 10 point mark. Catamounts still hold that double digit lead, Phillip, but they're not going away or the Citadel Bulldogs. They're fighting, they're, they've been fighting all day, and large in part by Mike Grissel down low, he's, he's kept them in it, just rebounding, blocking shots, boxing out. Scoring, he's kept a minute and he's given his team a chance now to make a push at this lead as we wind down the game. This zone defense I think has helped the Bulldogs as well, especially on the inside. Keaton Cole drives around a defender. Swing it back, Matumbo will reset the offense under 10 on the shot clock, somewhere will get a look for three, bang. And well, Brian, how do you beat a zone? You shoot right over top of it, Trey Summer does it again from beyond the arc. He found an open hole to get a good shot up, and he shot it, and obviously he made it, and it looked great. Keaton Cole's been trying to do that a couple last possessions, hasn't been able to make it, but we've gotten open looks from three, and I knew it was only a matter of time before we started hitting them. And perhaps a bigger stat, it puts the Catamounts back up by 15, as Larry Hunter even had a little fist pump for that one, as Sumler got another shot to go. Skip pass inside, Grossell, a nice move on the freshman, Kenny Hall, who's a little frustrated with himself, and timeout on the floor, as Ishmael Hollis will check in. Bulldogs take the timeout, if you're the Bulldogs, what are you discussing with your team right now, down by 13 points? To me, it's all about defense. The Catamounts have been getting second, third, fourth shots almost on every possession thus far. So I think if you're the Bulldogs, you really got to tighten up defensively, and you've got to keep the Catamounts off the glass if you want to make a push towards the end of this game. And we mentioned at halftime this was a Citadel team that had 23 points. They've already eclipsed that here in the second half. They have 49 total. And what is different for them offensively than it was in the first half, Bryant? Well, they've gotten down to gross out a lot more than they did in the first half. And um, that you're right, they had 23 points. But it's only, you know, only a little bit more right now they have. Um, but... I think getting down to Grissel has been the key for the Citadel, and I, they've also gotten a couple more turnovers that they didn't get the first half. And they're also shooting the ball a lot better, Phil. This is a Citadel team that shot 28% in the first half. They've upped that to 37.5% here in half number two. Summer time winding down on the shot clock. Fade away, in and out, won't go. Boggs tips the rebound to Matumbo. Down to the rack, and one. Count it in a foul, Haruna Matumbo again. Brandon Boggs set him up with the board. What has Aruna Matumbo not done in this game? I mean, he got hit in the head, it looked like, and still was able to make it into the basket. He's been playing lights out today, and 
I, he can't be stopped. His 23rd point here tonight, looking to make it 24 and put the Catamounts up 16. Free throw is good. If he can keep playing like this, you better watch out for the Catamounts in the Southern Conference Tournament because he's a very difficult player to stop. Catamounts lead by 16. The largest of the night has been 18. Fadeaway jumper, that won't go. Loose ball on the floor. Haruna Matumbo in on the action again. Hits the deck, gets it out. Brandon Boggs. Boggs looking to work the break. And now they'll set up the half-court offense. And that's a big difference I've seen in this game, Philip. Catamounts seem much, much more patient offensively. And that's really what it's all about. There's no need to rush. You've got 35-second shot clock. Take your time. Get the best shot. I mean, 65 points isn't exactly an offensive showing, but it's been very sufficient, and it's got the job done. We're sitting here in the 16-point lead with almost left, with just under four minutes to go. You're in perfect position. And Keaton Cole lights it up again from beyond the arc. A familiar sight here at the Ramsey Center and everywhere, and Miller with one of his own. And a little three-point contest going on between the two right now. Yeah, Miller saw Keaton Cole's three, and he raised him a three of his own. And Trey Sumler now backs out the offense. Citadel back in a man-to-man. Catamount -man. started hitting the outside shot. You now have to respect it. And the Catamount's also shooting better from the floor. Keaton Cole from way outside. That won't go. 57% from the floor for the Catamounts here in the second half. 42.9%. That was at the 16-minute mark, I beg your pardon. Grossell to the lack. He's stripped by Brandon Boggs and Keaton Cole. Keaton Cole looked like he was almost at about half court on that long shot. I guess he, he, was, he thought he was feeling it, and he's had a great game. I think five three-pointers for him, but I think that was a little bit too far out. Cole now off the drive. Catamounts will pull it back out, nearing the two-minute mark. Catamounts up by 16. Nice backdoor pass. Sumler can't get it to go. Hollis stripped of it on the way up. Matumbo, that won't go. Hollis the rebound. He's blocked by Grossell. Into the front court. King Cole thought he had the strip. And they call a foul. With 155 to go. Believe it or not, we are just now getting to that media timeout with 155 to go. We'll take a break. 68-52. We'll have one more check with Ryan Keyes when you come back to TV62's coverage of Catamount basketball here in the Ramsey Center. Pause over with the Cat House Band riling up this crowd. We'll send it over Ryan Keyes. Take it away. Kyle and uh, the crowd not too happy about the call on that last possession with Ismael Hollis going up to the hoop. But besides that, a very well-played game by the Catamounts. And maybe it's these uh, flashy pink uh, shoelaces that they've got going for them right now. But whatever it is, it's been working the night for the Catamounts. Back to you, Kyle. Thanks again, Ryan. Thanks for your work all game long. And, you know, maybe there's something to this pink thing for the Catamounts with the shoelaces. Matumbo has the pink socks. He's put up mammoth numbers here this afternoon, or tonight, rather. Maybe we should have pink zone games more often. Absolutely. <laughs> At least wear the pink socks if you're Matumbo. Defensive rebound off the miss. It's a 15-point Catamount lead, under two to go. Catamounts will try to work some of this clock. Jawaski King is in the game with four fouls. Nice pass inside. Won't go Hollis. Go up and get it. Stub it home, big fella. Over the top he goes with an offensive board and a flush to add to the highlight reel. What a big finish that was. That was a confidence dunk right there. Every game I have been calling recently, Ismail Hollis' confidence has gone up and up and up. And that dunk right there showed how much confidence he has in himself right now. Well, I'll tell you who else is playing with a lot of confidence. 
even though they're on the wrong end of a 17-point deficit, this Grossell kid, he's played really well here tonight, which is custom for him. Absolutely. Tonight he got a double-double, which is his 21st double-double of his career. Moves him into just one behind Regan Truesdale of all time for Citadel, and it also gives him the single-season single record of 13 double-doubles. A record for him, a, record, a school record for a single season. So congrats to him, despite the outcome of this game with a 17-point deficit right now. Kids played hard. He's a hard-working guy, clearly, with these results. So congratulations to him. I'll give him till next game to break the all-time record in a career. I, I think that's well in his reach, the way he has played consistently for this Bulldogs team. Smithson missed the lay and then committed the foul. Citadel will come down here and shoot, but the Bulldogs are now in the bonus. We, Bryant hit on the confidence of Ishmael Hollis. He is learning to play not only the outside Everyone shooter role, but he's also showing his athletic ability. And he has some hops, and he can flush at home when he needs to. Absolutely, Kyle. That was one of the most athletic plays I've seen all season, going up over a taller defender and just slamming it down all over him. Maybe yeah, we could submit that one to Sports Center. Certainly worthy in my book. Ishmael Hollis went right over him putting a cap on what will be a catamount win here at the Ramsey Center. Tawaski King, turnaround jump shot won't go. Smith's in the rebound, looking for help, kicks it out. Tankowitz will take the jumper, that won't go. And Citadel will get the rebound, the Cat House Band with their victory champ. Tawaski King the steal. Trying to take it coast to coast, lost the handle of it. Sinclair almost got a block. Tawaski King add another rebound. And a game for Tawaski King for sure, as that is his 14th rebound here tonight. Catamounts will dribble out a huge win here at home. The Catamounts now will improve to five and 10 in the Southern Conference, 11 and 17 overall. But the bigger picture there, game ahead of Chattanooga now. And only a game and a half behind Appalachian State. And before you know it, the Catamounts could even realistically still get that third seed in the North, or that three spot in the North, help their seeding in the conference tournament. But a lot to look forward to, a big win for the Catamounts here tonight. Yeah, and today I think is the best overall game I've seen them play all year, both defensively, offensively, the intensity they brought on both sides of the ball. The way Matumbo had himself, the 14 rebounds by Tawaski King, it was all around a great team effort and arguably the best performance all season long. Now, Bryant, Western Carolina takes this win, and this gives them what as they head down the stretch? I think it gives them confidence, and that's what you need right now at the end of the season. If you can get confidence come tournament time, that's a huge, uh, it'll, it'll help you a lot and hopefully bring us to, hopefully what we can cross our fingers is the NCAA tournament. And that also breaks a three-game conference losing streak and overall for the Catamounts. Catamounts improved to 7-4 and four here in the Ramsey Center. A tough place to come and win, and for Citadel, the woes continue. They fall to 1-14 overall in the conference. A tough year for them, but the Catamounts also reversed that trend of losing five straight to the Bulldogs. A lot to look forward to. It starts Saturday at Elon. They look to events earlier lost. It was here in the Ramsey Center. But for now, we'll send it away from our TV62 crew for Ryan Keyes, for Philip Jackson and Brian Hene. Thanks for joining us here tonight on a Catamount win, 70 to 53, your final score over the Citadel. We'll see you Saturday for the Catamounts. Ladies style against the Chattanooga Mocs right here in the Ramsey Center. Tip off scheduled for three o'clock.